It absolutely isn't, no question about it. Um, AI is now providing banks with huge uh, benefits in terms of enabling them to reduce false positives, um, for example, to obtain a more holistic view of their customers and also to reduce their costs in the process. Uh, there can be no doubt that technology um, can help. And of course, AI is a very generic term. We know that it covers machine learning, natural language processing, and a number of, if you like, sub-technologies or technologies are underneath the umbrella term of AI. Um, AI can find patterns um, and make decisions and learn from data far more quickly than human beings. I'm not suggesting that we're not at the phase yet where um, AI can do all the things a human can do. You still need human judgment to decide whether the particular person fits with your risk appetite or not. Um, but the point is that AI can give you a lot better information to make your risk assessment. So there's no doubt in my mind that the use of AI will become very commonplace um, in the pretty near future. I believe um, that in the long run, there has, has to be more collaboration in terms of fighting money laundering. Um, it's very interesting at the moment because um, one of the major obstacles to preventing financial crime is the ability to share data. And there is no structure at the moment in this country for that. But the Dutch banks um, and the Belgian banks have actually got together and they are they have a utility now, which is carrying out transaction monitoring for the major banks in those countries. I would like to see something similar happening uh, in the UK. And I would like to see there being less discussion about the obstacles to data sharing and more discussion about facilitating it, particularly in relation to the issues with data protection and the fact that data protection shouldn't prevent you if your objective is to prevent financial crime. It's an interesting point to say who is best placed because there are so many players in the financial system, not only the banks and the financial institutions and payment companies, but also, of course, the traditional service providers who have given, who've provided data for years to those industries. Um, there are also the reg tech companies and, of course, the newer entry, enter, uh, entrants into that market. And I think that a number of them have a role to play. So there's no single entity which is going to prevent financial crime. It's going to be prevented by activities which are a collaboration between the players. But of course, the banks themselves with their ability to monitor transactions are absolutely key, no doubt. So you have got, if you look at the, the broader market, you've got sometimes law firms and accountants actually enabling money laundering to take place in the way in which they form companies, shell companies and things of that nature. Um, and I would hope that in the future, those sorts of activities as OPBAS, um, as a supervisor becomes more uh, active would be prevented. But I, I certainly think that we have a long way to go in terms of the actual on the ground ways in which banks can prevent money laundering. And I think that they are the key players, those financial institutions, they have got to take responsibility. And at the same time, the regulators, because they're part of the ecosystem, ought to be looking at ways in which they can help banks make their lives easier and how they can meet their compliance um, obligations in a cost effective way. Um, and I'm hoping that the regulators will in due course see that Talking about liking reg tech in a very general sense doesn't actually help. They've got to look at the outcomes from reg tech firms and decide whether those outcomes are something that they want to encourage banks to adopt.